Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards bring you an unusual true story on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. And here is our distinguished host, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hallmark Hall of Fame, where we tell you true stories about real people. Tonight, we salute one of the most beloved men of this century, the late Tom Mix. He's been called the greatest cowboy who ever lived, and he numbered among his friends some of the outstanding men of our time. One of them was a man you'll hear called the King of Hollywood, <laughs> and indeed he is. His name, Clark Gable. We are proud to have him join us tonight. This is Clark Gable. Tom Mix was one of the most honored motion picture stars in our entire history. He was a man of tremendous personal stature who gave high inspiration to the millions who saw him perform and to those who were privileged to know him. Tom was a matchless friend. I'm glad to say he was mine. <laughs> oh, thank you, Clark Gable. I knew Tom Mix, too. And so did the greatest cowboys of today, like Gene Oakley and, and Roy Rogers, William Boyd, and Will Rogers, Jr., You'll hear from them all later in the broadcast. But now, here's Frank Goss. 365 days a year, hearts are lightened by Hallmark cards. Happy days are made happier. Lonely days become no longer lonely. And every day is a brighter day when the mail brings a Hallmark card. For Hallmark cards are more than just a message of cheer or sympathy or love. They are the right message. Thoughtfully expressed in the right design, the right words. And that Hallmark on the back shows that you cared enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the new color picture, Knights of the Round Table in Cinemascope, starring Robert Taylor, Ava Gardner, and Mel Ferrer. And now Mr. Barrymore brings you, with portions transcribed, tonight's exciting story on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Screen, Tom Mix was often cast as a sheriff of, of Marshall fighting for law and order in the Old West. Well, the role fitted him well, for in the early 1900s, Tom Mix actually served as a United States Deputy Marshal in the Southwest. Although he later was to make 370 motion pictures, no film story ever written for him was more exciting or courageous than the one he lived himself when he was a United States Marshal. And that is the true story we'll tell you tonight. It began around a campfire in the northeastern Oklahoma Territory. Well... What's the matter, old partner? Get a little cold for you? Yeah. Well, snow will be coming pretty soon. Then we can give up this range riding for the winter. Sooner than anybody expects, I reckon. <laughs> oh, you'll be warm enough for tonight. Mm, run all night. Oh. Well? Hello, old man. Hello. Well, yeah, I'll be hanged. You fellas sure traveled quiet. We understand you've been selling some cows, Beckett. Huh? You took 30 cows over to Vanita yesterday. You sold them, didn't you? Who are you fellas? We were over at Vanita, Beckett. They gave you $280 for that beef. We want it. You do, huh? We sure do. Shorty. He's covered, Cass. 
Hand it over, Beckett. Shorty Cash. Yeah, you're the Schatz brothers, aren't you? I heard of you two. Get out the money, Beckett. All right. Don't have much choice, do I? All right. Here you are. Yeah. Thanks, old man. Yeah. Thanks. Let's go. Stranger? Yes, sir. I wonder if you could tell me where I can find the sheriff's office around here. Are you right in front of it? Oh. Maybe you're looking for me. I'm Chief Deputy Bert Schuster. I'm glad to meet you, Deputy. I'm Tom Mix, United States Deputy Marshal. Oh, yeah. I heard you might be in on this. <clears throat> you're here about the Schantz brothers, huh? Yeah. Well, I can use a little help. Glad to meet you. Come on, let's go inside where it's warmer. Yeah, fine. That's ah, bad business. Yeah. Those two got to be stopped. They'll be stopped. Have a chair, Marshal. Thank you. I wish I was as sure about that as you are. We've scoured this whole area. Can't find a trace of them. And this cold weather hasn't helped much either. My men don't like riding a horse when the weather gets below zero. You can't blame them for that. But then I doubt if the Schantz brothers like riding in this weather either. You're new on this, Marshal. There's something special about these two birds. They sure know how to get out of sight and stay out of sight. I've been trying to think where they'd go. Oh, north, south, east, west, any direction. Yeah. Well, my personal opinion is we aren't going to get them around here. I think they made it to Mexico already. Sheriff, sure. how about those mountains over there? Are uh, traveling up there? No, I don't think so. Have you looked? No. Well, if I were running and wanted to make it hard for anybody to get me, that's where I'd go. Yeah. Uh-huh. The Indians always went around those hills. They didn't like the storms, the wind. The idea they might freeze to death when one of them sudden blizzards come up. Oh, I've been up there, Marshal. You're right about them being hard to get to. But I think you're wrong about the Schantz brothers wanting to hide up there. Just the same, I'd like to go up and have a look around. <laughs> These horses won't do as much good pretty soon. Trail's getting narrow. How far to the crest? Oh, maybe another mile. <clears throat> you can't see it from here, but um, about at that overhang, it flattens off into a boulder field and shoots right on up to the top. And no horse can travel there. Oh, man, we haven't seen anything like a trail so far. Any use in going all the way? How are your feet? <laughs> I haven't been able to feel them for two hours. Or any other part of me either. <laughs> Don't you ever get cold? <laughs> I'm as cold as I can get and still be alive. Mm -hmm. Who now? Oh, 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 oh. Fine. Wait a minute. Uh, there's an empty Winchester shell. Yeah. Uh, somebody's going ahead of us not too long ago. There's no rust. Now well, let's keep going. Yeah, we'll have to go it on foot from here on out. Uh, hey. Huh? Hey, that smoke over there. Yeah, that smoke. Uh, I'll try the ledge. See anything? Uh, the shack over there. And the clearing. Come here, take a look. Yeah. Do you remember any shack up here before? No, but then it's been years since I've been up here. Someone's going to have a nice warm night. You ever seen a man chopping wood before? No. You? I've seen his picture. That's Cass Shantz. Cass Shantz? No, no, hold it. Hold, hold it. it. Let's go. That's Cass Shantz. It's a cinch his brother Shorty's inside the shack. We came up here to get him. I want to bring him to life, Sheriff. 
Alive or dead, it doesn't make any difference to me. I'm not a United States Marshal like you. I'm just a local deputy, and those two buzzards killed a man in my jurisdiction. I want them any way I can get them. And I want them alive. Oh, I get it. The $500 reward. There's huh? that, but there's more. There's half a dozen murders I want to talk to them about. Now, us walking across that flat right now to pick them up isn't going to start anything but a lot of gunfire. You know that. I'm willing to trade with them. And I want them alive. All right, Marshal. Well, you go back, Sheriff. Get as many men as you can get. Bring them up here. I doubt if the Shantz brothers would start anything if they see they're outnumbered. All right. You gonna just sit here and wait for us? As long as I can. What? Huh? I figure I can last till about sunrise without a fire. But if you aren't back by then, I'll have to go in that shack and get warm. I'll get back as fast as I can. Good luck, Mix. Yeah. So long, Sheriff. In just a moment, we return to the second act of the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Haven't you often envied the type person who never forgets a date, the kind who not only remembers birthdays, but remembers all the special days in each friend's life? You probably wish that you could be as thoughtful and as loved for your thoughtfulness. Well, let me tell you a secret. There is one easy, sure way that you can remember all the occasions you want to remember. Get a Hallmark date book. Actually, this little memory minder is more than a date book. It's a calendar booklet with space for your notes on every day of the year. It includes a listing of the gifts for each wedding anniversary and the birthstones and flowers for every month. There's a section for your Christmas card list, too. That means you have your friends' addresses with you whenever you need them. For the Hallmark date book is small enough to fit inside your purse. Now, this handy, attractive book is a gift to you from the fine store where you buy Hallmark cards. Make it a point tomorrow to pick up your Hallmark date book for 1954. And now, Lionel Barrymore brings you the second act of our true story of Tom Mix. death many times in his fantastic career. He fought in the Boer War, the Boxer Rebellion, and in Cuba with his close friend Teddy Roosevelt. He was an inspiring and determined man, a brave man who believed in justice, but he also knew the meaning of fear. And Tom Nix never knew its meaning more intimately than when he was a United States Deputy Marshal on the trail of the Shantz brothers. I remember the way Tom told it to me years later. Right after dark, one of those sudden storms come up. The temperature dropped way below zero. It snowed all during the night, and when the first morning light appeared, I knew that Sheriff Schuster had been lost, or he was dead, or he was caught in the same blizzard and couldn't get down from the passes. I had to make a move or freeze to death. I began to ease down toward the cabin. Off to one side was a small corral and a shed. Jass and Shorty Shantz were no goods, but they took care of their horses, and sooner or later one of them would be coming out to see how the horses had fared the night. That would be my chance to get them apart from each other. My one chance. Check the rock. See if it's froze up. Yeah, I'll do it. All right, cast out, reach. Why, you... Where are you, Cat? Get him up, Shorty. Way up. Not me. My leg. My All right. Drop the gun, Shorty. I'm a U.S. Marshal. You're under arrest. All right, Marshal. Go ahead. Get it over with. Get what over with? Shoot me. Kill me like you 
Don Cass. Cass isn't dead, Shorty. I got him in the shoulder. And you aren't going to die either. Not here, uh, anyway. On my knee. I'm taking you back to town. Both of you. Yeah. Who are you? Tom Mix. When the posse gets here, we're leaving. Let me tell you something, Mix. They ain't going to get here. What do you mean by that? Why do you think we chose this place to hold up? First snowstorm of the year blocks the pass down below. Appears to me like it's going to snow a week. Yeah. Appears to me like you're stuck here, Mix. For the winter. <laughs> I got the two of them into the house and stopped Cass's bleeding. By nightfall, he was sitting up in bed cussing me. And Shorty, too, I fixed him a splint. And he lay back on the other bunk with his legs stuck out and watched me cook chow. And outside the shack in the gathering darkness, the snow fell steadily. Deeper and deeper. Look at him, Cass. Ain't he dainty? Yeah. Hey, Marshal, be sure you put enough pepper in them beans. I don't like them less than they're hot. Nah, don't you worry, Cass. Old Marshal Tom Mix is supposed to do most anything better than that. Didn't you know he was a national rodeo champion? Why, sure. Of course, Shorty. And all them stories they tell about him bringing in the outlaws. <laughs> the way he treats us, I bet they were just begging to be captured. Oh, he's a daisy, the Marshal is. Yeah. One thing bothers me, though, brother. Well, tell the marshal, brother. What bothers you? You want your pillow fluffed up? No. no. What bothers me is this. He can play nursemaid all right, and he can cook just like a lady and tell us stories about all them bad men he's took in. The real question comes down to one very simple thing. What's that? Well, you and me, brother, we can sleep all winter if we want to. But how long you reckon this marshal can stay awake? <laughs> I'd already been up one night in two days. The Schantz brothers slept in shifts. One of them always awake, watching me, watching him. In spite of their wounds, they were rested men and dangerous men, waiting for the one chance they could to catch me off guard the moment I'd fall asleep. Well, good morning, Marshal. How's the war against crime and lawlessness coming? Morning, Cass. Still awake, Marshal? I'm still awake, Cass. So what time is it? Yeah, breakfast time, Shorty. Smell that coffee. Mmm. Hey, Cass. Yeah? This looks to be a nice winter, Cass. My shoulder knits right, it will be. Oh, now, don't worry about your shoulder. Marshal here got shot up in three, four wars. Knows all about how things get fixed up. They say in China he got his scalp blowed clean off. No. Took 66 six stitches to put it back on. Wait up. Where you going, Marshal? I want to see how the horses are. Well, why don't you leave your guns here? We'll take good care of them. Pistol or carbine. How are we going to work this? Just wait. How long? A couple of days. What well, would not matter? He's going to go to sleep sooner or later. When he does, we kill him. Don't want to try it before then, huh? You know how fast and good he can shoot. Yeah. It's easy. All we got to do is just wait. wait they did. I was all right for the first two days and nights. And the second night, the snow stopped falling, and I thought, I got a chance now. If I can just stay awake. The posse is bound to get through if I can just stay awake. I drank gallons of coffee, but on the third day, it started to get me. I'd sit there in the corner by the stove, and they'd watch me, sometimes together, Sometimes one of them would sleep while the other lay there, just lay there, looking at me. And an hour would pass without a move in that little room. I'd feel my eyes rolling back, and I'd stand up fast and shake my head. You getting sleepy, Marshal? How about another cup of coffee, Marshal? I go... Go on, go on back to sleep. It's nice sleeping, Marshal. So all right. You just lie back and close your eyes and you just let go. You just let go and close your eyes and everything goes spinning away. 
Okay, Shorty. Kill him. No, you don't. Shoot him, Shorty. Why, you... Oh, turn... Gun won't load him. No, but this rifle is. Uh, Drag yourself back into bed, Shorty. Sure. Sure, but it won't be long, Marshal. You can't last forever. Not without sleep. <clears throat> hey, you, you, you wouldn't shoot me like this. I'd shoot you anyway. I'd shoot you down the way you shot a half a dozen good men down. Sure, I can't last forever. Sure, I need help. But if I can't stay awake, if I can't stand it, I'll kill you both. So help me, I'll kill you both. It was the fourth day. I had to get sleep. Just five minutes. One minute. I was starting to hear things. I thought I was hearing guns go off. And then I knew what it was. When I was just so tired to get out of the chair, I pointed the carbine at the ceiling and pulled the trigger. Hey, look at him, Shorter. Got himself a new trick for keeping awake. Listen. That's the posse. Yeah. Al? Yeah. Al, you're there? Yeah, come on in, Schuster. It's all right. Tom, you all right? Uh, I'm afraid I need a little help. Uh... Tom, you aren't leaving yet. I'm afraid so. I've got some other things to tend to. I'll be back in time for the trial, though. Well, aren't you forgetting something? Forgetting something? Well, no, I don't think so. Five hundred dollars, Marshal. A reward for the shots, boys. Came in this morning, and it's all yours. You sure earned it. Here, here's a check. Ah. Uh, but don't you want it? Uh, no. No, I, I don't want it. What? Well, in that shack up there... I listen to those two no-goods talk. They got a mother who doesn't know anything about them. They lay up there and laughed at her and for what she tried to do for them. I don't think they've ever done anything for her in their lives. So, uh, see that she gets this, will you? I will, Tom. Well, so long, Sheriff. the motion picture industry sought out this remarkable man, Tom Mix, and that he quickly became the idol of millions of youngsters and adults, too. And not only an idol, but a very real flesh and blood symbol of justice and mercy, of the inevitable triumph of decency over evil wherever it's found. <laughs> the number of Tom Mix's friends in Hollywood is legion, and tonight, we're pleased and proud to have four of the greatest Western stars and motion pictures here with us to join in our tribute to Tom Mix. Hello, friends. This is Gene Autry. You know, I was proud to call Tom Mix my friend. He influenced and inspired my early life and my career, just as his real life and film adventures influenced most of the young people of his time. Well, this is Roy Rogers. The great cowpunch and star Tom Mix was and is an inspiration to all of us. His influence for good upon the young people of his time was phenomenal. Tom was a great man, and I'm proud to say my valued friend. This is Bill Boyd, or you might know me as Hopalong Cassidy. I knew Tom Mix. To me, he was one of the West's great men. Tom was a man who dined with presidents and kings and a man who rode the range with the roughest, toughest cowpunchers of his time. Tom was one of the greatest cowboys of all, and one of the finest. This is Will Rogers, Jr. You know, my father always said that Tom Mix was one of the top cowboys of all time. Dad and Tom were close friends. It was a fine sight to watch Tom Mix and Will Rogers riding together 
along the bridle paths of Beverly Hills. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Tom Mix. Thank you, Mr. Barrymore, for tonight's splendid Hallmark presentation of a gallant story from the true life of my husband. I'm grateful, too, for this opportunity to express my sincere appreciation to Tom's close friends, Clark Gable, Jean Autry, Roy Rogers, William Boyd, and Will Rogers, Jr., who have honored Tom here tonight. To the Hallmark Hall of Fame and to all of them, thank you. Tomorrow, drop into the fine store where you buy Hallmark cards and let them give you their New Year's gift to you, a Hallmark date book for 1954. Now, that's not a pretentious-sounding gift, I know, but the truth is that your little Hallmark date book can be the means of a much easier, happier, and friendlier New Year for you. You see, it is a booklet of little calendars with enough space at each day for your personal notations. You can write in the birthdays and anniversaries of everyone dear to you. Make notes to remind you of special dates. Never again need you have that sinking feeling, ooh, I forgot Uncle Harry's birthday. For your Hallmark date book is small enough to carry in your purse for constant reference. Two, it even suggests appropriate gifts for special days. List the flowers and birthstones for every month, the gift for each wedding anniversary, and your friend's addresses are written conveniently in the front of the book. So you see what I mean when I say you'll find it's easy to be the thoughtful, friendly person you like to be if you have a Hallmark date book. And now here again is Lionel Barrymore. You know, that's a very good idea you have, Frank, to, to let a Hallmark date book help us to a friendlier New Year. Because if there's one thing that would be an absolute guarantee of a happy New Year, it's a year when each of us individually tries to be a better friend. Our thanks for the appearance of Clark Gable to MGM, producers of the 3D color musical Kiss Me Kate, Starring Catherine Grayson, Howard Keel, and Ann Miller. Remember, you're also invited to the Hallmark Hall of Fame on television every Sunday, starring Miss Sarah Churchill. Until next week, then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. <laughs> Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you carry enough to send the very best. Our producer director is William Frug. Our script tonight, with portions transcribed, was written by Wilbur James. John Daner was heard as Tom Mix. Also featured in our cast were Vic Perrin, Jack Edwards, Harry Bartell, and Lawrence Dobkin. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you until next week at the same time when we'll present a true story about William Allen White. On January 17th, we'll bring you McDonald Carey, starring in an interesting story about Mark Twain. And the following week, a true story about Robert Baden Powell on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. <laughs> this is the GS Radio Network. This is KMBZ, Kansas City, Missouri.